The issue at hand is what we're investigating right now, which is the aircraft and the issues that we seized at the airport and a couple of foreign nationals that we are right now holding for investigations. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I want to mention that as law enforcement family, we are investigating that matter together in unity. And we are making serious headway so far. But I want to mention that we will not carry out these investigations in the press. We respect your right to getting information from us, but we will not carry out these investigations in the press for a simple reason. Whenever a person is arrested, the, 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 the aim is to finally make them receive justice, meaning they must be given a chance to defend themselves, to be heard in a court of law, which will be an open place for everybody to attend. Therefore, when we are investigating, we are preparing for court. It's not everything that we're going to say to the press or the members of the public that would, I'm saying we, we shall not give to the members of the public that which we think is going to help us in the courts. Because it's in the court where that person will just defend themselves. The case at hand, ladies and gentlemen, I'm assuming that we all know it. The case at hand, ladies and gentlemen, has been thoroughly dissected and the direction is now very, very clear. We know where we are heading to as law enforcement. We want to assure you that we know where we are heading to in this case now, and we are decided. Perhaps let us more cut out of the bag. This has been a clear case of scamming. A clear case of scamming. Gold scamming. We have gold scammers around here in our country, and this is where they are manifesting their trade. They are applying their trade in public, and we have managed to at least find a way of cornering. So this is a clear case of scamming. Contrary, contrary to what has been coming out in the social media and everywhere where people are speculating, pointing fingers at people, saying all sorts of things, we are now giving you the official position. This is a case of scamming and we are investigating. Very soon you will see court cases starting. Having said this, ladies and gentlemen, I want to mention that uh, as you seek information, let there be decency in that process. Let there be decency in that process. We shall not withhold information which we think, which we believe you need to know. There is information which we have which you don't need to know and we won't give it to you, ladies and gentlemen. Because you don't need to know it. You don't need to have it. So let there be distance as you look for information from us. Do not arm twist us. Allow us to work professionally. Trust us. Whatever we do is well thought out. It's in the interest of the nation. We heard, I'm sure it must have been yesterday, when even some videos were flying around showing that the aircraft that we seized the other day has flown off. That is a very, very unfair way of dealing with each other as a nation. How can an aircraft for which the pilot is in detention in the police station, somebody is telling me that the aircraft has, has gone DG, and I go to the police station where the pilot is and I find him seated in the cell. Who flew that aircraft away? Then they are in pictures. That are tuned around to show that this is what has happened. That's what I'm saying. Let us have some bit of decency in everything that we do. Members of the public, through you, please, can we be decent? Let us not be misled. Some people will be doing these things just to mislead you. That aircraft is intact, just like our Honorable Minister mentioned this morning. It's intact. It is evidentiary material. It's not going anywhere. The court will move to that aircraft when the time comes. The other small aircraft is also intact. But as we carry out investigations, we are able to determine which material we are taking to court and what we are not taking to court. We must realize one thing. Even the people that are arrested have constitutional rights. 
So it can't just be coming out, ladies and gentlemen, and start mentioning names of people, even if we were not done with our investigations. It's not right. Suppose tomorrow it turns out that they, they are innocent. It would be like we've scandalized them, we've identified their names, and it turns out there's nothing that they've done. So we're very, very careful. In our processes, ladies and gentlemen, we sometimes tend people that we are previously accused to being witnesses. Because what we want is to secure a conviction. And we know very well the drive by the leadership of our country right now in law enforcement. What we want now, as much as possible, is to seize and forfeit assets to the state. If we see that material was stolen, we want to re restore it to the state. Because that's where it belongs. So as we fight crime, there must be value in the way we fight the crime. There must be value to the state. Do you? We need a lot of responsibility in the way we use the social media. People now, it's clear that we believe what comes from social media more than you believe what we tell you in this fashion. Members of the public, through you, please, Wait for us to tell you what is going on. Once we have told you, take it to be the truth. Don't pick anything that comes on social media. Don't pick anything that comes on social media. You will be misled. You will end up breaking the law yourself. So please, let's guard against uh, falling prey what comes out of social media all the time. As regards the aircraft, I'm inviting all of you members of the press, to see the aircraft tomorrow. Let's go together to the airport. Fair deal, isn't it? Let's go to the airport and see it. We show you, here it is. Then you see when I'm saying people lie, and they lie through their teeth. You see it. Let's go to the airport tomorrow. You'll be informed of the timings. We'll go together there. You'll see the, air, the two aircraft that have been seized. The manner we told you is with the Bank of Zambia. You see the vote there. The board has turned out to be negative. It's, 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 it's also with the Bank of Zambia. That is evidential material which will be used in future when the time uh, comes. Is that we don't want you to keep supporting us when we do things. But I think as much as possible, be objective in the way you report. Be objective. Have the nation at heart. I think we have a responsibility to protect the 19 or 20 million Zambians that are out there that don't have access to these facilities that we have. We are counting on you, the media, to help us in that one. Please, let's work together. Support us when we are carrying out these investigations. Wait for the day when the matters be brought in court. As much as possible, whatever you need to, to know will be given to you. When you don't say it, it means you do not need to know it. That is the message that we have for you today. And I hope you relate to the nation. And uh, we shall have an assurance that we shall move together as a nation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, DG. Just perhaps maybe we can allow just our three questions. Okay, one, two, okay, three. Thank you. We can start like that. Please, let's stick to the subject at hand. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Um, Dr. Edwin, um, there is a say that goes that uh, in the absence of information, there will still be information to cover up the gap. So, um, in as much as you have asked us not to, to even as much as you have said, some information you don't deserve it. There will still be others that will give information to fill up that gap of suspects. What would you advise us to be doing in such scenario, whereas in, uh, you say you don't need this, this information? And uh, would you clarify, because there is some speculation that the planes were um, dotted at the presidential pavilion? Thank you. Okay. Just a moment, to still writing. Yes, thank you. You proceed. Okay, come. Good afternoon. Please introduce yourself. Good afternoon. My name is Rhonda Mula from Diablo TV. Uh, 
um, DG, I never saw so family that does the scammers are connected to terrible or illegal mm. scale, uh, small scale miners who are syndicate between Zambia and Congo. And uh, there's a house in Roma where they, uh, they, they process the alleged uh, fake gold. Also, how many have you detained so far in connection to this case? And are you in any way investigating one of your own who are alleged to have been bribed by uh, the Egyptians? So the region case where scammers are connected to what? To the uh, syndicates between Congo and the, 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 the Congo syndicates. Yes. Okay. Um, they also have uh, the next one. The, the, how many so far have you detained? How many have you detained? In this case? Yes. And are you investigating one of your own? Okay. Who are alleged to have been bribed in this particular case? Okay. My name is Mokwema Chilana from Millennium Radio. Um, the Minister of Home Affairs uh, this morning announced to the nation that uh, the GEC is the only authority in regards to uh, the relaying of information uh, with this case. I want to um, find out, with that said, uh, the Minister of um, uh, Mines yesterday made an announcement that uh, that is a fact, not God, which uh, you, you, you earlier alluded to that it has come out negative. But, uh, it has uh, raised uh, mixed feeling to, to, to the public, especially um, the mixtures that were, were announced. So my question is, uh, was that test by uh, the Minister of Mines done in collaboration with uh, the DEC? And uh, what's your official position as the DEC being the official authority in regards to the decision? Thank you. Okay, we can now allow you to respond. Right. Um <coughs> connected to the Congo syndicate. Now we need to be very careful whenever we talk about this kind of matters. It's the same way that I will say that there can sometimes be a lot of speculation. Now, these scammers we're talking about, some of them could be from across borders, others could be from Zambia. But again, for the same reason, we can't really give you the details, otherwise the, the investigations will be jeopardized. But we have mentioned to you, there are scammers, and scammers work across borders. They are very sophisticated people. We're talking about, I think when you look at that kind of money that you seized, that's not the kind of money that you just find anywhere on the street. So scammers have international connections. So we are investigating to ensure that these networks are properly deciphered and we see how they are operating. So it's true, there could be connections from other countries, but some of the scammers that uh, we're talking about are actually Zambians. They are Zambians. How many people are detained? Right. At the moment, we have uh, nine uh, foreign nationals and four Zambians in detention in connection with this particular matter. And like I mentioned the other day, the figures might keep rising because as we're investigating, so when you talk about an investigation process, we are interrogating those that were detained, and as we interrogate them, they bring out more information, which throws us back, back, throws us back on the street again to look around for those people that they have mentioned and those that have been found to be connected. So this is the number we have now, four plus nine, but the number may rise. The other one was. Have we, are we investigating one of our own who is alleged to have taken uh, a bribe? This is where I'm saying, if you have any information, any information of whether even me I got a bribe, come and report to the IG. Whether the, the DDG at immigration got a bribe, come and report to me. Bring out the information to us. We are your people. We are here because of you. Trust us. If one of us has misconducted themselves, bring the information. So is it possible that you can get the information to them of which this officer has got and how much you got? <laughs> That's what I'm asking for. So if you don't tell us, and then you just write in the media, on the social media, there is one man who got three million. What are we going to do about that one man? Because they have not told us. They say they're not, they're not picking him. But tell us. As law enforcement, we work on information. When you see us going to bust a, a particular case, it's information that you have given us. And as members of the public, you must be responsible enough to inform us. And we shall act. So I'm looking forward to meet you, ma'am. Tell, tell us 
which officer this one is. If it's me, of course, you can tell me. Find another person to report. You are all here. <laughs> report. So action is taken. Rule of law. I think the president emphasized this one. Rule of law. Nobody's above the law. The last one, I didn't get it very clear, but fake God. Uh, just simplify it for me. What was that one from? Yeah, what did you say exactly? Um, what's the um, official position from the DEC in regards to um, the estate of uh, those demons? Is it God? Is it team? Is it safe? Okay, okay, okay. You've been uh, the official yes. authority. Yeah, now this is where we operate. I'll give you a practical example of the DEC. If we find you with uh, uh, some substance that looks like cocaine, all right? The day we get you, we shall clearly indicate suspected cocaine. Because when we look at it, having dealt with cocaine, we know it looks white, it looks like this. So we say suspected cocaine. The next thing is, we'll send it to the relevant authorities who are going to confirm whether it is cocaine or not, not ourselves. And why that is done like that is also a way of checking on each other. Can you imagine if we ourselves are being able to examine what we have found from you and confirm that it's a drug? You get my point? Eh? After I've suffered investigating you, then we find this drug, and then ourselves have to confirm that it's cocaine. The same people that have been investigating. Don't be fair on, the, on you as a target. So we have to send that to an independent institution who will now examine that, test it, and confirm that it is cocaine. They'll bring a report back to us and say, okay, DG, this is cocaine. And then they will give us an affidavit. Then we we'll arrest you and say, look, now we are sure this is cocaine. So similarly, when we found those uh, pieces of gold that looked like they were gold, the first thing we needed to do ourselves was to take it to the experts. <clears throat> and what we did was they did not even move from the airport. Okay? They did not even move from the airport. They were instead put in a position just there at the airport, straight from the airport. <clears throat> and the Ministry of Mines experts were called on the spot. And they came and tested, examined that using their methods. It's a ministry of mines, that's the expert, the geologists, the whatever they are called. They came. We have no capacity to verify that. Us using our eyes, that looked like God. Even yourself, if you saw it, it was just like God. And that's why we're saying it is a scam. It's, when you look at it, it's God. You touch it, you live the way it is God. You can fall for it. So we said, no, 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 let you go to the expert. The expert said, it's not good. What they found was that 58-59% uh, of that material was copper. 58-59% was zinc. And there's most more other elements inside there. So, do we trust the process? Yes, we do. That's a government department. We are a government department. We gave them to verify for us. They have told us that. Fine. Does it jeopardize our case? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. The investigations continue because the point of the matter is that Whatever, whatever was being carried in there, did it have the right, did it follow the right legal provisions? So we still have a case, a very, very good case. What we do, by the way, sometimes if we feel like these, the circumstances indicate that this substance might still be good, we have the leeway as an investigative way to call in other people to test it again. Have a second opinion. That can be done. So the way is open. We are doing this for, you, for the people of Zambia. So they are convinced we can do that. We had planned today to show you how to show you some, some, how some, uh, God is tested, but then for some reason time was not enough for us to get a sample from the, the Bank of Zambia. We wanted to show you that. So to see how they test and show that this is God or this is not God, we wanted to do that so we had first time would not allow. Otherwise, the point to note is that uh, the process is the government process, it is trusted. If as investigators we feel like uh, we are doubtful, we have the leeway, each of us as the institutions were independent, we can bring a, another person to test it for us. And we say, well, even a third, even a fourth, even a fifth opinion if you wish. But what is important is for now, we have been informed by the Ministry of Mines that this is not God, it is zinc and what and what, and that is how it's going to be taken. They will give us the official documentation. If we need that in court, we can present it and that expert can come and testify. Thank you. Okay. No, but you can please let us repeat the same questions. Let's have the last, the last three questions. We are we're running out of time. Salim, yourself, in yourself. Good evening, DG. Good evening, thank you. Uh, you have made an earnest appeal to members of the public not to believe what comes out of social media. Um, I think media has revoked 
the Drug Enforcement Commission has a social media platform, the police, and including all media houses, information is being turned out on, 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 on social media. As a matter of fact, there are hundreds of people right now watching your presser mm -hmm. on social media. Would you like to address or maybe clarify on what you regard as social media that shouldn't be believed by the public and that should what that that which shouldn't be believed by the public. Okay. Next. Yeah. Um. Um. My name is Ira. I read for Zambia Twenty Four. Just a I... moment. Just a moment. Okay. I'm um, my name is Ira. I read for Zambia Twenty Four. My my question is simple. You, you have confirmed this was a scam. My question is, have you taken some kind of a deliberate doubt to confirm or to rule out the possibility that there could have been a pure God, but some people tried to trick other people and got the real one and the used in the, 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 the fake one? Was there a swap in short? Some, something like that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, that's all. Was there a swap? That's the question. Okay. That's yes. the same question? Okay, good. Okay. That's the last one now. Yes. Are you not repeating? No, no, no. Okay. Um, uh, maybe a follow-up on uh, Salim's question, uh, DJ. A lot of uh, those videos which we are seeing circulating on social media, especially the counting of money, they are done, uh, we find their official, maybe, deck officers uh, doing the counting and uh, Somebody is filming and they go viral. I'd like to ask, uh, doesn't that jeopardize your investigations in some way and maybe measures which may be put in place to ensure that some of that information doesn't go out and uh, is um, mis, uh, uh, more like uh, misinterpreted by the public? Thank you. Thank you very much. And that is the last one. I think that one is a clear case where when, when you're in an operation area, if you see, if somebody is authorized to take pictures, it means it should be for official use, maybe as evidence or anything. But really, if somebody's taking pictures and then wants to use them for, for social media, that's an officer. That's in display. That's in display. And if that's a an officer is found, I think all the law enforcement agencies they will not tolerate that. You don't take pictures for the purpose of posting. You can take the pictures that's taken officially, maybe because they're supposed to be used as an evidence material. So that could be disciplined my dear. Then uh, <coughs> social media should be believed. Now you see. I think we need to have um, an understanding. <coughs> we need to have an understanding of what social media is damaging and which social media is helpful. And that is something that can be uh, discerned if somebody is responsible. For example, social media po uh, posts a uh, nude uh, picture, pornography. Your own mind will tell you this is not a good thing to watch. You leave it. I'm just giving a very, very extreme example. When it comes to information, members of the public, I think you can see me clear. Please, when you look at a particular issue like the one we are looking at now, the very, very specific, this is an investigation, a criminal investigation. And then we are here carrying out the investigation. Why not come to us and ask us directly what you want to find out? And we'll tell you, we can't tell you this for this reason, but just know this is what is going on. You move away having an idea. For example, somebody comes and says the plane has flown off and uses the wrong picture. That's irresponsible social media uh, idea. You post it and even put some, you know, whatever you put it. When the one who reads gets convinced that it has gone away, let there be chaos now. Some of us are not allowed to switch off our phones. It almost jammed. The phone almost just froze. Has this aircraft really gone, DJ? Has this aircraft really gone? The picture is here. It's very clear. Why are you arguing? I had to physically go and see it again. Even touch it. It's here. <laughs> My mind was having touched. It's here. I had to drive to the airport. That's when I started responding. Was even the leadership. We're asking, DJ, are you telling us the truth? This aircraft is gone. Here's the picture. That's what we mean when we say irresponsible social media. So it's very easier to, very easy rather to, 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 to draw the line when you look closely. Then on our websites, uh, my dear, we post official statements. We post. And when we post, if you really want to know what is going on, go to our DC page and read. 
Because when you read our page, they're adding phones which you can, we can ring to find out more information. But you go to one where he doesn't even put his name, he just writes Chimwi. That's a, a page. And there on Chimwi page, you find the aircraft has disappeared and you believe it. Who is Chimwi? <laughs> See the responsibility you're talking about. So some, some, sometimes they use videos which are not even in Zambia. You know that. They take pictures which are not even in Zambia. I've seen that. And then they say this is somewhere in Kaplonga area. This is the way these people do this. Not even in Zambia. Even the counting of that money that you got at the airport. There were videos that were totally wrong for a different occasion altogether. Bank of Zambia came in with their machines and they were just putting it there. Bah, brrr, it goes, but they were counting one by one. <laughs> Five million. <laughs> and then you believe, no, we're just, well, this is the picture they were counting. And what was found was 11 million and not 5 million. And someone gets confused. Come to our website, that's the official website, and you get it right. Get it, man? Thank you. Thank you very much.